It's a beautiful Monday morning and House of the Dragon has just aired its latest episode in which so far is still maintaining an engaging story that seems to be reinvigorating so many fans both old and new to the franchise. Which if you think about it, isn't too hard when you give fans this. I said I'm fine. Instead of this. I have done nothing wrong ever in my life. What's interesting is that there are still many people who never saw Game of Thrones when it first aired, who are being introduced to this universe by House of the Dragon, and quite frankly, because of that, I wouldn't recommend them even starting Game of Thrones if that is the case. What the hell did you just say? Now, before I even get into the main subject of this video, this isn't going to be ranting. It's not going to be me saying things like, oh my god, Game of Thrones is so sh**. No, 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 no. No, anyone saying that needs to give themselves a hard slap and then another one for good measure. No, most of the series was very good and very consistent. And that's part of the point. It was very consistent until the final two series. I went back and re-watched all of Game of Thrones to make this video. And now my watch begins. And because I'm coming from a perspective of just viewing the series not reading the books, I think it's also very important to mention that sometimes it's best to be able to differentiate between the different types of reasons of what makes something good or bad. Yeah, no shit. For example, this isn't a law video. It doesn't argue accuracy in that same sense. Source material is relevant to this argument up until a point, but really this is simply about what makes good television. So just to reiterate, the argument I am making in this video is not about the whole series being good or bad, but rather it surrounds one word. Legacy. Will I be remembered as a good king, Lionel? What is the legacy of Game of Thrones, and will House of the Dragon's reputation help or hinder that legacy? Game of Thrones didn't take long in becoming the dominant small screen show that everyone talked about, even people who didn't watch it knew about it. It's a series that started many YouTube careers as well as countless reaction channels, and it was a series that invited people in with intrigue, political maneuvering, deep dive character development, and consequences for actions of its characters. Now, many people argue that the deterioration of the series began at different stages, but as I say, this isn't a law perspective. I have not read the books. This is about how ordinary folks see it, the majority of ordinary folk, that is. It's the perspective of just a casual viewer who saw it all from start to finish when it first aired. So, with that in mind, for most people, the problem started with Series 7. In fact, it started earlier, just before Series 7 aired. Upon learning that both 7 and 8 were to be condensed versions, as in less episodes, 7 episodes for Series 7 and 6 episodes for Series 8 respectively, this already sounded... off. As there were still a lot of stories left to tell, loose threads to tie up, so to speak, so to have a condensed series? Yeah, not a good sign, but as fans do, you ignore little things like that and hope for the best. Series 7 airs, and what do we have? Danny's character radically altered. John's character radically altered. It became less about the very building blocks of what made the show what it was, and more about... Uh... Dragons burn this, this army kills that army, followed by meaningless cameos and ending with an obvious consequence, which became less impactful due to the other stuff already mentioned. There was no great dialogue worth remembering, no build-up to something impactful, just meaningless fights. Now, I'm not sitting here saying that the fights weren't fun, they just don't add anything to the overall story. All flash, no substance, so to speak. I suppose this is a similar complaint shared by Christopher Tolkien when he saw Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings, for example. And before anyone goes, well, hang on, isn't that what Game of Thrones is all about? Uh, not so much. Uh, you know, one of the dynamics I started with there was, was the sense of uh, people being so consumed by their petty struggles for power within the Seven Kingdoms, within King's Landing, uh, who's going to be king, who's going to be on the small council, who's going to determine the policies, that they're blind to the much greater and more dangerous threats that are happening far away on the periphery of their kingdoms. Each of the first six series was about setup, was about character development, was about good or bad actions that then led to a single episode, traditionally episode 9, 
where some sort of battle or tragedy would be seen. But while Series 7 was bad, and it was bad, it has a sprinkling of fun in there. Series 8, on the other hand, was a catastrophe. A six-episode arc in which the Night King, the underlying villain for the whole show, is killed in a single episode with very little build-up after he gets past the wall. No explanation is given about certain aspects of his character and the White Walkers in general in the show. And while I can appreciate that most of these aspects I'm talking about are answered in the books, as most viewers are not book readers, this is irrelevant. For example, what happened to the babies that Craster sacrificed? Yes, we saw them being turned, but they are still babies. Do they grow up fast? Are they placed in some sort of hibernation? No idea, because the show doesn't tell us. Characters make stupid decisions. You're not like your sister. You're not. You're better than she is. I would have murdered every man, woman, and child in River Run for Cersei. She's hateful, and so am I. <laughs> Matters. Only us. And decisions that further destroy their characters' mindsets, like Danny's transformation into a bloodthirsty tyrant. Now, while this could have been a good plot development given time, this would have required not only series 7 and 8 to each be 10 full episode series, but it would further need two more series as well to truly flush out this character change. Jon Snow throughout the first six series was a hero, that's how people saw him, a traditional masculine hero who was then pussy whipped in a matter of six episodes. A man who gets sent away for his troubles in the finale of series eight to live at or beyond the wall while Bran, Bran sits on the Iron Throne. What the f is this? Whose ass didn't I kiss? Bran who constantly said, I can never be Lord of Winterfell. I can never, I can never be Lord be of Lord anything. anything. And the three-eyed raven. And then suddenly says, If we choose you, will you wear the crown? Why do you think I came all this way? Oh, piss off! Piss off. <laughs> yes, you could argue. But he knew he would be king. But so what? That doesn't make it a good ending, does it? Everyone wanted John on the throne. The only logical move after every other legitimate contender for it dies. The showrunners knew that and they didn't do it. It felt like a rushed job, the whole last series, like the showrunners couldn't wait to get this over with, probably hoping Disney was going to give them that Star Wars project they oh so craved. Mm mm, that shit ain't happening. Series seven was bad, but series eight left a sour taste in people's mouths. No one wanted to go near this franchise. But then, like one of Restoros' ravens landing at your doorstep, word got out of a prequel series was in development a series people were in definite two minds about. But luckily, with new energy, new showrunners, and a great cast, the first series of The House of the Dragon returned to old form, to those very things George talked about. The plots, the manoeuvring, and the consequences of it. Series 2, so far, continues this in good form. And you know what? I think unlike Game of Thrones, it will finish strong. For one good reason. The source material is complete. I'll do it! I'll slap the shit out of you! A Song of Ice and Fire is still not a finished series and is not going to be a finished series. Do you have an update on the Winds of Winter? Um, you know, it's the same update I've been giving for a long time. I'm, I continue to work on it. It continues to get longer and longer. I mean, I was working on it the day before I flew back here for three or four days, but I was, I was rereading some chapters that I'd written earlier and I didn't like them well enough. And uh, so I kind of ripped them apart and rewrote them. Um, and I've had some ideas while I've been on this trip. I gotta get back and, and hopefully get to it while the ideas are still fresh in my head. Um, it's a big, big book. I've said that before. It's a challenging book. It's probably gonna be a larger book than any of the pre previous volumes in the series. Dance with Dragons and Storm of Swords are the two largest books in the series. They were both about 1,500 manuscript pages. I think this one is gonna be longer than that by the time I finish it, and I think I'm about three quarters of the way done, maybe, um, but that's not 100% done, so I, I have to continue to work on it. The departure from a show based on source material, and therefore good structured show, to one that was rushed and made up was evident after series six. And if you think George had much of an input in the show, 
he didn't. Well, Chris, there was no pressure on me because I'm I'm hardly involved. I mean, I I am basically a consultant and uh, who writes one episode per season, and um, so whether there was pressure on Dan and Dave to go one way or another, I really don't know. This doesn't excuse him for letting the show go to the crapper, of course. He had years to write a decent ending and didn't, so fault can be placed on many a head. House of the Dragon is based on one single book, Fire and Blood, a book with a clearly defined beginning, middle, and end. And I believe this will outshine Game of Thrones and potentially, I say potentially, lead to them remaking it completely, the whole of Game of Thrones. That is what I think the true goal of House of the Dragon is. See if there is renewed interest in the series and then go from there and remake the show with all its concepts included. All the aspects that were left out before. For example, Lady Stoneheart. I'm not a book reader, but even I know of her existence. So I hope this video gave a, I don't know, a different perspective on why House of the Dragon is better. It doesn't do it from a lore perspective, it just does it from a viewer perspective. It doesn't make the show amazing, by the way, it doesn't make it world leading, but to compare the two, House of the Dragon is definitely winning. Anyway, thank you all for watching as far as you have done, and until next time, good night.